Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect of Unlight, and today we're going to be looking at Azure Bastion and how you can use this to access virtual machines securely through a browser on Microsoft Azure. Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about Azure Bastion. Now, Azure Bastion is a really cool service that allows us to connect to virtual machines without having to publicly expose those virtual machines to the public internet through a public IP address. In other words, I don't have to create a public IP address when I create my VM to access it through something like RDP. And the other advantage that it has is that it prevents us from having to create something like a VPN to get into a virtual network as well. It allows us to basically connect to a VM through a browser so we can use the browser to interact with our virtual machines and secure those virtual machines on a private VM with private IP addresses. So this only allows us to go into the Azure portal, connect to the virtual machine, get a shell if I was using Linux or get an RDP session and it's administered completely through the browser interacting with Azure. And this is a very secure way to access virtual machines running on Azure rather than having to do some of the other schemes that we had to do in the past. So given that it's pretty simple to set up and simple to do, we'll just do a quick demo and I'll show you how to set it up and you'll be up and running with Azure Bastion in no time. So I'm here in the Azure portal and I have an empty resource group and I'm going to create a VNet right here. And the first thing I need to create in my VNet is just an empty VNet that you can add this to existing VNets as well. But when I'm creating my VNet, I have the option of setting up Bastion as part of the creation of the VNet, or you can go back and add it to an existing VNet. In this case, I'm going to be setting it up as part of the initial configuration for my VNet. So I'm going to basically take the defaults in this uh, first tab right here. I'm going to call it bastion-vnet and central us is fine for the region and that that resource group and uh, the subscription are fine too under this one uh, it's going to give me a default ip space of 10.1.0.0 slash 16 and that is just the uh, a slash 16 which is a 16-bit address uh, space for the network and 16-bit for the host address as well a host portion of the ip address and this is the default subnet in that which is the basically the first uh 24 bit address space for or slash 24 within this range right here. So I'm going to rename this particular uh, subnet right here. I'm going to call it VM um, subnet just so that I can use this one for my VMs. And that's to give it a more meaningful name. And I'm going to save that. Now, here under security, though, I'm going to have the option of enabling Bastion host right here. And this is where I can enable DDoS and we'll get firewall protection in a minute in a future video. But the DDoS protection is an on or off type thing. It gives you better DDoS protection and you can kind of filter it or tune it a little bit more uh, per your liking if you go with a premium rather than the basic DDoS protection that's just enabled by default on Azure. But I'm gonna select Azure Bastion for this demo and I'm gonna call mine Bastion dash demo and I need a IP space that is in the CIDR block that I had defined on this tab right here so it's got to start with 10.1 and then something in that particular range which 1.0 will be the next available 24-bit uh, address uh, space that is going to be uh, selectable right there so I have uh, 24 for the network and then eight, eight bits for the host which is in this IP range right here it's a subset of that so that's going to be the subnet for my Azure Bastion subnet so the subnet is going to be named Azure Bastion subnet so it will have a meaningful name and it's going to take on this right here for the subnet name so for the public IP address you have to create a public IP address I'm gonna call it my Bastion uh, pip and it's going to only enable static and not enabled me to choose one of these other options for SKU and so on. So I'm just going to go with the defaults there and I can turn on those if I wanted to, but for this demo, I don't need it. And once I have that created, I can run the validation and hit create on my VNet. And this will only take a second to create and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, now that my VNet is created, I have everything deployed into my resource group. I can either go back to the resource group, which would be the actual VNet that I created, but I can go back here and also look at what it did create. It created my Bastion VNet right there. There's my Bastion demo Bastion right here that is configured. That's the resource that is in my Azure 
resource group right here. And then there's the uh, public IP that's assigned to my bastion uh, host right here, not my bastion host, but my bastion demo right here. So the next thing I need to do is add in some virtual machines to this resource group. So I'm gonna add in a Windows VM here. I'm just gonna simply type in Windows and um, let's see if I can find uh, a Windows VM that I can use that will demonstrate what I'm trying to do here. Let's choose Windows Server here, and that should be fine for what I'm doing. And I'm going to make sure that it's in the same resource group, and I'm just going to call it Windows uh, Demo. And I need to choose a VM that's actually going to run this. I'm going to put it on a DS1. That should be fine for this. And let's give it a username and then a password. And make sure that the password matches. And I can then choose allowed selected ports 3389 for my incoming port for RDP. Disks are fine there. Here I'm going to not select a public IP address because what I want to allow for is the connection to this virtual machine to only happen through Bastion. So by disabling public IP address, I'm basically going to put this VM on my VNet, but I'm not going to enable this particular VM to be accessible through the public internet by way of an address that is pointing to this VM. I want to access it through Azure Bastion. So let's just leave that like it is, and let's uh, keep the public IP address off and uh, take the rest of the defaults in these, uh, disable monitoring, which I'm just doing a demo, which that'd be fine for this. And it says I have RDP ports open to the internet, which uh, I do, but it's open to the network since I disabled the IP address. And uh, so we can basically take those into consideration and let's go ahead and create this particular uh, virtual machine and let that create. Now uh, let's let that do, do its thing. And I'm gonna go back over here to home and come back into my resource group. And I'm gonna add in another virtual machine. In this case, I'm gonna use Ubuntu server instead of Windows server. And I'm gonna put it on the same VNet. In this one, I'm just going to take a bunch of defaults here, uh, which be fine. And I'm gonna use this right here uh, for login name. And since I don't wanna do the whole juggling of SSH keys, I'll just use a password for that. And port 22 for SSH is what I need. And now you can take the defaults in the disk. Again here, I'm going to select none for my public IP address because I'm going to be connecting to this by way of Bastion. And now I have nothing exposed on the internet to this VM. And I'm just going to uh, click next. I think it, I forgot to name the VM. It needs me to name it, so I'm going to call it Linux-demo. And review and create this guy. And let's take see if that takes... It says it's open to the internet, but it's only for testing. Yes, it is open to the subnet, but it's not technically open to the internet. Uh, Bastion will allow me to connect to that VM, even though it's technically uh, not connected to the internet by way of a public IP address. So let's let these virtual machines create and we'll come back when they're done. Okay, I got both of my virtual machines created now. I'm gonna pop open these in a new tab here. And let's take a look at my Linux VM right here. So this is my Linux VM. Currently have no public IP address associated with this. So this is an internal only IP address that I'm gonna be using connecting to this. So to connect to this, I can click connect and notice I have the option to click Bastion here. And this will allow me to uh, select Bastion uh, as one of the connect options. So RDP for Windows, SSH for Linux, if I had those enabled through a public IP address, which I don't. For this one, I have Bastion available. I'm gonna click on use Bastion here. And so this will then ask me to enter in the credentials for whatever I supplied when I created this virtual machine. So I'm gonna put those in here and the it says I have a pop-up blogger here. I need to allow it for this particular uh, domain. And let's click connect again. And what this is gonna do is just open a new tab inside of my browser. And I'm gonna allow it to copy and paste. And now I have with me uh, the ability to uh, interact with a shell that is on that virtual machine inside the context of a browser. So if I wanted to get sudo access, for instance, I could run sudo dash i, and then I can do like ls dash l and get a list of files, whatever it might be for this particular VM. And 
I can also copy and paste text here if I said, if I wanted to put in a command here, let's just say I did a df-h to get the, uh, the drive space available on this VM. And let's copy and paste that back here. And then if I go paste it, there it is. I was able to paste it back into the uh, shell from the, the clipboard that is integrated with the browser. So it allows me to share text between both the virtual machine and what is hosting this particular browser, which is my desktop here. So Azure Bastion allows me to connect to SSH to a Linux box. And just like we have SSH available to this particular Linux box, but that doesn't have a public IP address, I'm going to do the same thing for my Windows box here as well. So if I want to connect to this one, just like I did for my Linux box, I can come over here to Bastion, and then I can say use Bastion to connect to this guy. And because it's going to detect it's a Windows box, I'm going to log in using the credentials I supplied for this Windows box. And I can connect to this Windows box here. And this will give me a graphical user interface that is going to log me in to my Windows uh, terminal or really my Windows desktop here on my machine. And it will allow me to use this VM just like I would through an RDP session, which is kind of a cool thing because I no longer have to worry about an RDP host being exposed through a public port. Now, of course, there are other ways around this. If you wanted to use something like a VPN to connect to Azure, you could do that in VPN. But Bastion offers a very convenient way to uh, do a lot of different things on your uh, particular machine, whatever it might be, in the context of a browser. So I don't have to set up any kind of VPN service. I don't have to set up any kind of publicly exposed addresses or ports or anything like that to connect to my virtual machine. So this is a really good option for a lot of different reasons. And like the um, Linux VM, so this is just a standard uh, VM right here. Uh, it's got the integrated clipboard right here. It says, hello there. So that's now going to be on the clipboard for the Windows host. And like open up notepad here and uh, load this. This is a pretty modest VM for running Windows, so it's not exactly snappy. If I do paste, uh, there's that text. And if I go uh, from my VM and um, copy that, and if I come back over here, I should see that same text in my clipboard integrated with Azure Bastion. So I can share text with this as well. It, it doesn't allow me to share things like files or anything like that to the, the host that is running this Windows VM uh, or the same thing on Linux. I can't share files through that clipboard, but I can share text uh, through there, which is nice for doing things like copying, pasting in commands or uh, doing things or getting data off of this and copying and pasting that in some local context as well. But all in all, this is Azure Bastion. So you I mean it gives you the ability to interact with your virtual machines without having to have something like a jump box or again, a VPN uh, configuration. You just simply set up Bastion and then you can connect to any virtual machine that is on the same VNet that that Bastion subnet is on. And then you can interact with those through RDP or SSH, depending on which one of those you're using for Linux or Windows in that case. So that's a quick set of quickly how to set up Bastion on Windows and on Linux. Very easy to do in the Azure portal as well as through some scripting as well. So again, very useful and very secure way to access VMs on Azure. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.